Good morning, this is Laura with Papori of Life. I hope that you had a beautiful night's rest, woke up feeling refreshed and grateful for your day. And that's the topic of which I want to talk about on this Sunday morning reflective time. And I want to talk about the word gratefulness. In scripture there are a lot of verses that speak of this. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, I know that a lot of followers are not Christian believers. I just had to bring my notes up. I know that a lot of people are not Christian believers. And you know what? That is okay because gratefulness is for all of us. So you get to choose whether or not you're going to be grateful for your day. My getting 10 hours sleep last night, I am so thankful for. And then I look around and say, I still got more food to preserve because of the farm visit I had. And then I thought, you know how grateful I am as much as I did get done? For those of you who do know and understand Lyme disease, what I did in the last two days was a lot for me. It wasn't tons and tons of food, but it was a lot for me to put up. And I still have some things to do. And um, so all the berries are put away, whether they're frozen, they're dried, they're, you know, whatever the case may be, they're, they made, I made sauce out of them. All those things I'm grateful for. I truly am. And I guess sometimes we forget to be grateful. This is an upside down world in this time right now. And there's a lot of people sharing some truth about what is going on now. Food shortages. Truckers are being so honest with us. And yet a lot of people are saying, ah, can't be. And then other people I've talked to say, I just don't know what to believe. You know, neither do I. I really don't. But I do know the one thing I can stand on and trust is that God loves me. He loves my family. And He He will provide for our needs. If the world comes to an end, then I hope He takes me. <laughs> if the world comes to a stop where everybody wakes up, I know some people are starting to wake up and see what's truly what happening in our world. We need not to be fooled. Scripture talks about this all the time, about the fools of the world. I'm not saying that everybody that doesn't hear what's going on is a fool. What it is is when you hear something and you do nothing about it, that can be foolish. Now, I am not saying to We'll talk about the food shortages real brief. I am not talking about, okay, we know that there's going to be a food shortage. I It would be more foolish to go around out and charge up your credit cards to $1,000 just to stock your shelf. That would be foolish. But to be aware that the food shortages is potentially in front of us, that's important. It's not foolish to understand that. So what do you do in circumstances like that? For us, when we have a few extra dollars, we go out and we, we get some food. And that's why I went to the farm stand. I'm not going into the grocery stores right now. I really am trying to avoid that. Um, my husband does most of it. He goes in and he gets milk, creamer. And if my body is not able to make bread this week, it's emotional energy that I sometimes don't have. He goes out and he gets his bread. and But I try to make him, him bread, you know, at least once a week. It doesn't always happen. But I'm grateful for my heart. And I'm grateful for my husband's understanding. And you see, that's what's very important. We shouldn't be stressed about what we cannot accomplish. We should be 
grateful for the heart in getting there. Should we complain? If you can't get it done, you can't get it done. Sometimes I get discouraged. You can talk to my husband. <laughs> I get discouraged. But you know what? He gets discouraged. And that's what we try to do is to bring back our life in terms of you're feeling down. You go in and try to talk to them or listen to them. And it helps. It's the same case when we go to um, any place that we go where we need to talk to somebody even when we have to pay to talk to them about something that might be needing attention. We need them to hear. We need to understand that they have a life as well. And we need to come together and be respectful. And that shows a little bit of compassion. But it brings us back to gratefulness. Are you grateful that you had the time? Are you grateful they took the time? Those are important things. I want to go over some benefits of gratitude, if you'll bear with me, because I have my notes here. Okay. When we're grateful, when we don't sit around complaining all the time, it opens the door to more relationships. I've made the mistake of complaining about things. We all do. But where's your heart when you complain? Now, I think it's important for us to share our concerns. And yeah, it does sound like we're complaining because we're trying to get an answer. And in some cases, you know, when, when it's a situation where we just don't know what the answer is, it does come across as complaining. But is it complaining or is it trying to reach an answer, trying to seek understanding? Or trying to make a decision on how to change that. But ha having an open heart with gratitude for each other, for what you do have. I have a nice home, but it's so small. <laughs> and I keep telling my husband, I am so, I am so grateful for our home. I truly am. I'm grateful that we were able to do a few repairs or updates during the world chaos over the last two years. I'm grateful for that. But I am kind of sad at times because it doesn't provide some of the spacing that I need. Like my husband has told me, he goes, I so wish I could get you a summer kitchen. And I look at him and I say, yeah, me too, hon. <laughs> but we're not there. I would love to have a bigger piece of property with a bigger home so that our family, the whole family, now that the girls have, have expansions to their own family, I want them to come and be comfortable. And they do visit. But my, sometimes we might have to pop a tent. <laughs> Can't do that in the winter. But I'm grateful for my home. You know why? It keeps us safe at night. It is warm. Right now we have electricity, we have heat. We were able to fill our tank completely up. But I'm hopeful, but I am grateful for the oil that we do have for this upcoming winter. So it's all about attitude. And you know what? God sees our gratitude in the little things. So, and that, that relationship there is important too our relationship with God for those who are believers and if you're not a believer in Christ I'm not here to convert you but I do share my faith and I hope in sharing my faith at least on the Sundays when I do that you hear some of the positive things that are in scripture and there's a lot of things in scriptures that are scary. There's a lot of things in scriptures that say, well, that's no different back then than it is now. True. Because the Bible, it's not a story. It's not man-made. Yes, man wrote it. But it's things that 
God wanted for us to know. Gratitude improves psychological health. It's true. When we complain too much, your burden becomes others around you, their burden, and they become down. And that's not helpful at all for any times in our life, more, more so during these last couple of years. But you know what, when you're, when you're grateful for the little things, God helps, and, but it also improves how your brain is handling things. Um, inside we have a lot of emotions, toxic ones too. And I had some toxic ones this past week. And it was hard for me to cycle through and understand why I was feeling those feelings. Sorry about that. And yet, I had to deal with them because the world is spinning around us on an axis I can't even explain. But when we have gratitude for what we do understand, it helps our brain to be able to absorb the other things. Gratitude enhances our empathy towards others and reduces our aggression. Imagine that. Imagine that. If more people were grateful for what they have, we're more grateful for the people that are around them, grateful for their pets, whatever it is, including grateful for their resources. Sometimes that's the hard one. Some people don't have friends, or some people, they're not grateful for the friends that they do have. Do you know that we're not here to have a billion friends. Now I consider anybody who treats me well that I see from time to time a friend, most especially if I'm being treated with respect and treated with love. New people I meet in the grocery store. They might not be friends to have over for dinner, but if I start seeing them more, they're a friend because if you start, stop and talk, even neighbors, it's a different element of friendship. But that's where gratefulness is, is for human life, so that you can have a relationship. In reference to those close friends, my kids used to complain, Mom, I don't have that many friends, and look at what this person's done. And I said, we're not here to have everybody we meet to be our friend, because we can't. People, human life is not designed that way. And I'm talking even Christian friends. <laughs> but some people are lonely. How do we make friends? You make friends by being genuine. Being real. Even on your bad days. But having enough courage to say, you know what? I screwed up. I'm really sorry, would you forgive me for how I treated you? People who cannot come forward and apologize in a genuine state, they're, they're missing out on things. But I am grateful for those who do apologize. I'm grateful for those who make mistakes and genuinely apologize. I'm grateful that I have a heart to apologize. And I'm grateful that I've come to a point in my life that I don't take people's junk anymore. You want to be angry at the world? Don't bring it here. You want to be angry at me because I said no? And what am I saying no to? People expect a lot. And I've chosen to be grateful for my strength and the ability to have grown enough to say no. 
I learned a lot of it this past year. More so over when I made the decision to stop my sewing business. I'm grateful. You know what the other benefit is? Gratefulness allows you to sleep really well. <laughs> And I woke up 10 hours later. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's 8 o'clock. Oh my... And I still have things to do. I still have some tidying up to do because I was busy in the kitchen. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I think that's why over the past week I've just been overwhelmed and tired. Because, you know, when my husband goes off to work, I'm alone getting this work done. But you know what? I'm grateful that I have the work to do because whether it's cleaning the house or where or making jams jellies and sauces I'm grateful that I have a desire to be a housewife do I want to get out absolutely <laughs> I have no place to go <laughs> that's not a complaint what it is is we have so much work around here we sometimes forget to say we need to get away. No, we're not in the place where we can go rent places to stay away. We do wish we could. But you know what? We're making the best of what we have. And we have a beautiful yard that we can go out and just enjoy the outdoors. So we have gratefulness there. So when I get sleep, that's really interesting though. It improves your self-esteem. That does not mean you're going to have bad days like I just had. I had a few days where it's just, I told my husband, I said, I'm not depressed. I'm just tired. But you know what? He says, the problem is, Laura, and this isn't, he's not trying to insult me. What he's saying is, your ambition is so big you don't break it down in pieces. The list I had to do on Thursday, <laughs> nobody could do. <laughs> but I ended up breaking it down. I still have things to do today from it. And you know what else? Whether I lived on a 20 acre lot or living on this quarter acre property, there will always be something to do. So we always have to take a moment and reflect on why do I feel overwhelmed? Understand it, but appreciate what you can do. And that's self-esteem and knowing that I can do this. Even on your bad days, you might have to put it off, but know that it can get done. Having self-esteem is also important for when you have to address things with other people that might not be part of your family. I had to address a situation a long time ago with the elders of our church. And I was pretty confident back then as well when I went in because you know what? I prayed really hard. I asked God, allow me to serve you in a manner which is pleasing to you. And one of the individuals in that meeting got a little hot under the collar and so and then they started accusing me and this is in human life people tend to turn it around and blame the other person so I got up and I said you know this conversation sorry there's some bugs here um, I got up and I said I'm sorry this conversation is now ended because if I respond to what you just said I will not honor God and I walked out the door and he started raising his tone and his words and my husband got up and he said she will not come back until you can talk to her in a manner that is respectful and kind the same way she has treated you. Now those weren't his exact words. <laughs> I can't share the details of the conversation because he put them in their place. What my husband did was very honoring to me because our spouses, we might have disagreements, 
we might not always see eye to eye. But when it comes to a place where the other has to stand up for the other person, what he did for me was very honoring. And we both left. We weren't angry. We just left and I thanked him. And I was grateful, still am, that he's my husband. Are you grateful for the people you don't agree with and yet they be there for you? Are you grateful for them? I know we live in a world where there's a lot of relationships breaking up. A lot of relationships that are not there. So you might not have that spouse to be grateful for. But are you grateful for what you do have? Do you, do you have children? If so, are you grateful that they're there? They bring a smile to your eyes even when they make you frustrated. Are you grateful for that? Now, I can't say I'm very fond of the men who have walked out on their wives. can't say that I am. I'm not grateful for what they've done to the women, but I am grateful to see how strong these women have come around. They live a hard life, but they're, they're strong women, and I am grateful to see that kind of strength in them. And it's okay to be di disappointed in people who walk away from their children. And I learned um, a few weeks back, a month ago, that women walk away from their children too. I don't know how, because the women I know, they would not leave their children behind at all. <laughs> so it does make me wonder what's going in our world that would require people to walk out. But those who have stood strong, those who have come forward, I'm grateful for them to be that person that supports those children. Do you know what gratitude does? It improves mental strength. And those women I talked about? Gratitude. Those of us that have health conditions? Gratitude. You know, when I found out about that I had Lyme disease, it wasn't I was, uh, was I angry? I was actually at a point of relief because I didn't know what was going on. And I know I've promised to tell you at some point about my journey with Lyme disease. And it would be in a couple of parts. But at that stage in my life when finally a doctor, he was one I was seeing for another special need, and I was telling him my symptoms and we weren't sure if it was a hormone imbalance. And I was complaining. <laughs> but basically what I was doing is I was listing out my symptoms at the same time because he's in a hospital setting where he saw all the stuff that was done in that particular hospital. I, we have two hospitals. And um, we go to doctors at different locations within those systems. But he was looking through um, the MRIs, the blood work, the many physicians I'd seen, and he goes, Laura, I think I know what your problem is. And I said, what? And he said, I'm not sure. So when we did, actually after that appointment, I walked out and I was like, I felt great. Not healed. I felt great. Because you know why? Somebody finally listened to me, connected the pieces, and said, I think you have Lyme disease. Now, how do you be mad at a tick? <laughs> kill it. <laughs> I kill a lot of bugs. Sorry, God, I know they're your creatures, but why do you have to have them here? Yeah, I throw questions out like that to God all the time. But I was grateful. I walked away. I was grateful. And then I had to wait two to four weeks. I forgot how long I waited for the test results. He called me on the phone. He says, Laura, and by the way, doctors don't call you on the phone anymore to give you results. 
<laughs> I just want another appointment as you wait for results. But I was grateful because he called me. He says, Laura, I know what the problem is. This is what you have. This turned out positive. CDC, yes, he goes, it's long term. You got a long road in front of you. I'm going to send you a bunch of resources. I want you to start reading. And I was, it was like a sigh of relief. I was grateful. I started reading this stuff. I had no energy. I, I had no energy, but you know what? I didn't leave the couch or the bed much, so reading was a good thing. Went down to the library, picked out the books. And no, I didn't stand in line. I went online, <laughs> told them what books I wanted. When they're available here in town, I went to our local library branch. And um, I picked them up. I got tired reading it. I got sad. Not angry. I got sad. I was disappointed in people who would never listen to me before. Okay, I did go through a time of anger. And then I went back to my primary care and she told me, he's just making that up because that's just a way for him to make money. I said, but if you diagnosed me, you'd be making money. I'm grateful still for that PCP. I liked her an awful lot. She was very graceful. She was just a very compassionate woman. Very busy. Stressed out. You could see that. Even before the world fell apart, a lot of people are stressed. But to have an answer that explained a lot of things that were going on, even the ups and downs with my hormones, that was good. I mean, that wasn't the sole reason. There was other things that caused the hormone imbalance. But I was also starting to get older. Here I am. I don't think we're ever supposed to have a balanced hormone system. But anyways, I'm grateful for those people. I'm grateful for the people who have served us in restaurants. We don't go out anymore. And I'm okay with that. I'm grateful that I have the ability to cook a meal. Sometimes it turns out great, sometimes it doesn't. But you know what? I cook something and I know how to make it taste even better. I'm grateful. And I'm grateful for when my husband says, well, it's edible. He goes, please don't make it again. It's how he addresses it. And sometimes I don't say nothing and I'm not happy with it either. Most often, most of my cooking, 95, 99% of the time, it's, it's really a delight to enjoy. So gratefulness is all about you. How do you feel about people? How do you feel about your circumstances? How do you feel about when your children say they're going to come and visit. I have a daughter who's visiting today and I'm so grateful. She told me a week ago and she said, Mom, I forgot to tell you, I'd like to come in on the 3rd. I said, okay, because she lives up in Maine. And that's a three and a half hour ride from here. It's a long ride. We haven't made it up to Maine. We used to go, we used to try at least two times a year. And she would try to come down a couple times a year. Nobody can do that right now so grateful oh my gosh I'm grateful that she can we can't even see our grandchildren as much as we used to because of the gas pricing you know we have to be conservative and so does my daughter we all have to but we make time for those grandkids and um, not as often as we like and I guess that's one nice thing about technology is we can see them on FaceTime it's not the same we need hugs and you know, that's another thing I'm grateful for, is the ability to hug one another. We don't get enough of that still. But I'm grateful for those who are willing to give hugs. So in Psalm, know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Enter the gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. 
do I need scripture to tell me to be grateful? I think this is my personality. Because when people... Oops, sorry about that. Um, when people are ungrateful, when all they do is complain, it steals my energy stores. It really does. Now, are there places to complain? Yeah. You know, sometimes we can complain. Um, okay, right now people can understand food prices. We can understand that the food prices are high. But people, and they, they, people have been doing this for a long time. I, I got it in my sewing business. And I just learned to say, hey, these are my prices. I'm not going to compete. I do not compete with other people. And what was happening is um, new seamstresses, new who haven't sewn very long, were willing to do jobs for almost nothing. I said, I have years of experience. And they would say, well, you can do it this way. I said, then you can do it that way because when I sew, I do it to honor God with the skills and knowledge that he gave me and experience. I'm not changing my price. God does not say to reduce the quality of your work by reducing your price to meet the needs of another person. What I, why I shared that was I went up to the farm stand, I paid the price that they were asking, and it was for farmer's market prices, I feel it was very fair. High? Higher than last year, yeah. And he was saying, he says, I wasn't sure what you were doing with this food. I said, the stuff that I can't grow, I use. And this is what I do every summer. I come and I get my berries if the animals are stealing my berries. I get, I, my carrots aren't doing anything. So I went and I got my carrots. And I use onions all year round. So I got those few items. And he says, we get people who complain all the time. See, if you buy in bulk, you get a little bit better price. Um, substantial? Not necessarily, but not a better price. And that's kind of how I like to shop is, how can I get a better price? He says, we get people in here, and they're saying that they don't understand my prices because down the street at the grocery store, they can get the items for less. And he says, you go ahead, you go down there. See, my theory is this, and I'll tell you what he shared with me. I'll, well, I'll share his first. He goes, what they don't know, no. And he goes, and I've worked in the grocery stores in the produce section, is they get the stuff up. The truck comes in. How long does it take that truck to get there? Sometimes those items are on the shelf for a while. And he goes, sometimes the sales, and you, sometimes you can see those sales on the racks, the trying to clearance them out. I've never seen those prices to be all that great, to be honest with you. And it's food that you have to go home and cook now. And he says, and they're comparing me to their sales. And I said, it's because they got a deal from the trucker that brought it in. And I said, I'll tell you why I shop here versus there. Now, I do go to the grocery store and pick things up if I see a sale and know that I can get to it. But I make that trip, and I told him, I said, the reason is, yesterday you went and got the fresh Prudo, excuse me, Proto. Okay, I'm grateful that my brain doesn't always function because it can make me laugh. The produce is fresh. He picks it up, brings it in, the next day it's on his shelf. It's on his shelf faster than at the grocery store. So I'm grateful. And I said, I might have to pay a little bit more, but when I get home, I know that this stuff is fresh. I didn't have any bugs on any of my stuff, and I should have. But you know, you take it, you wash it. Um, I didn't find any, and I'm grateful for that. But I said I'm also grateful for the people I encounter. You guys work your little heinies off, getting everything on these shelves within a few hours. And it's on the shelves in a very presentable manner, in space that we can ponder around and get. So I said, you're not going to get a complaint from me. 
My complaint is it takes me an hour and a half to get here, so I can't come in every week. That would be something to be marvelous. <laughs> but I can't do that. And when we are able to move, we have to move to a place that is closer to where my husband works, which, oh my gosh, that would be so wonderful. But would I make that trip? Not once a month anymore, but maybe a couple times a year. Yeah. And maybe by then I'll have that outdoor kitchen or summer kitchen and I could go crazy. And maybe Lyme disease would be a part of my past. I have a lot of dreams, but I don't know if they're dreams or if they're hopes. Hope for healing. Hope that this world gets better. I believe that if people turn and become grateful for everything, honoring to when they make mistakes to others, asking for forgiveness, making amends, taking time to swallow your pride. We all have to do that. Maybe the world will get better. Maybe. There are, the world has always had people who are angry. They'll be angry forever. There's many things in my life that I could choose to be angry about. I'm not going to. And for that is another reason why I'm grateful. But with that in mind, I want to get ready. Let's see what time is it. I have another hour before my daughter hopes to be here. I can't tell you how happy I am she's coming in. My husband asked me last night, he goes, do you know when she's coming in? I said, nope. I said, I know she's alive. <laughs> she streams and she also has a YouTube channel. I watched her YouTube channel last night. <laughs> she just, I love her spunk. And I just love how she, you know what, I'm going to link her YouTube channel. I won't link her um, stream yet because she says, Mom, you need to do a stream. It'll be different than hers. It'll be different than my older daughter's. But it would allow me to, <clears throat> excuse me, it would allow me to do some of my crafts and cooking while I chit chat and stuff a little bit differently than how I do here on YouTube. YouTube, I'm in a rush because I'm pulling things together and showing parts of it. Whereas on stream, you can spend a couple of hours with people and they get to interact with you which is kind of thing. And that I could do that Facebook Live, but I haven't gotten there yet. So I'm grateful for technology because I'm able to share my heart. Not everybody will agree with me, but I'm grateful for those of you who are. My, my channel is still small. I do ask that if you like this channel, even if it's just my Sunday Reflective Moments, I hope you subscribe so that and there's a little thing where when you subscribe, there's a little bell there. If you highlight on it and you go up, there's a darker bell. If you click that, you'll get notifications. So you'll know when things are uploaded. Because I don't always upload things at 7 a.m., obviously. <laughs> I'm doing this at 9, 9, 9.30 this morning. <laughs> and normally I have it done by 6 or 7 on Sunday. So if you desire, please, please subscribe. I would love to see more numbers, more more subscribers. And I understand that some people don't like to subscribe. And I think it's partly because they're trying to reserve their identity. Some people I know who subscribes, but the general, pop, um, the general population I don't. So don't be worried about me knowing who you are. I'll know you can change your ID or however. Some people do that, even on Facebook. They don't have their real name on there. So, subscribe. Will it build my channel? Yeah. I'm trying to reach a thousand. I'm not there yet. As of this morning, it was 13. 
but I'm grateful for those 13. If you like what I post, you don't have to like everything. Like the ones that you like. If you comment, just be kind. Be constructive, but be kind. One of the things that is, I'm grateful to see how unkind people are because you know who your friends are. People don't need that toxicity. So I remove toxic comments. And, um, and I don't respond to things that don't make sense. I got a comment somewhere, and all it was was wor run on words, and I still haven't figured out what they were trying to say. But I'm grateful for the giggle that it, it produced out of me. And share. I appreciate those that share, you know, share these things that might help others. But if you're sharing, make sure that you like the post. And, you know, I can't explain more the reasons for um, you liking. The more I get for liking, the more I can do on this channel. Um, I have to have a stronger following. So, am I pleading? I don't make nobody do anything. And would I like it? Yes. So I'm asking. Am I making you? No. I think... You have to want what you're following to come through the feed. I've canceled some feeds because the person just, I don't know, they just weren't producing the same information they had a long time ago. So I stopped that constant reminder of when they post, but I stay on there because some of their stuff is stuff that I want to remember. And you can save some that are it's kind of fun. YouTube is kind of interesting because we can learn so much. And that's another thing we should be grateful for. But anyways, I don't want to keep this too long. It went a little longer than I wanted to and I'm sorry. I'm grateful for those of you who stayed long. I love the word gratefulness. Um, little bugs are out. I gotta go in. But I also gotta go do a little tidying up. Not that my daughter would care. She really wouldn't. I care. And I hope that you have a beautiful, beautiful day. It's July 3rd, the day before we celebrate our independence here in the United States. I'm grateful I live in the United States. We have a lot of freedoms. But with it, during this struggling time, we have to fight to maintain our freedoms. Not for selfish wants, not for selfish desires, for our rights to speak our mind, not our rights that we deserve this, our rights for this, and our rights, a lot of our rights are being stolen by people who feel that I don't know how to word it, so I'm going to stop, because it's best not to say what you cannot articulate in a fashion that is productive, and I choose not to be critical to the point where I shame others, and I hope, all my hope is, is that I can share love, I can be compassionate, Although that squirrel out there, this squirrel trying to get into my raspberries. <laughs> we just might have to talk to him. I got stuff over and he's trying to rip it down. He might have success, but I'll just go cover it back up. May your day be a blessing. Subscribe, like, share, and have a beautiful day. God bless.